Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to place a market, limit, and stop order. We will also be discussing order confirmation using the reply endpoint. To begin, let's start with placing a market order. I will start with our typical framework along with my method order request. In the order request method, I will create the base URL variable along with my endpoint variable, which should be set to iServer forward slash account forward slash your account ID forward slash orders. Once we have built our URL, we will need to use a JSON body. So I will go ahead with constructing that. I will call it JSON underscore body and set it equal to a set of curly brackets for the array value. Inside these brackets, I will need to set the orders field and set it equal to a list with an array inside. Then we need to create a few fields, in this case, including con ID, order type, side, TIF or TIF, followed by quantity. All available fields can be found on the client portal API documentation page under account forward slash account ID forward slash orders endpoint. With that said, I will use my Apple con ID. Then set market for my market order, buy for the side, day for my time in force or TIFF, and finally, I will set my quantity equal to 10. With the body set, I will create a reference to our coming request. I'll create the variable order underscore req and set it equal to requests.post. Here, we can set the URL to our base URL plus the endpoint variable. Verify equal to false, and then the JSON tag will be set to our JSON body variable. You are welcome to explore the full return but we will be using json.dumps to help with the display. I can set order underscore json equal to json.dumps, and then in parentheses, order rec dot json with a set of parentheses, followed by indent set equal to two. After establishing our pretty print, I will print out the order underscore rec dot status underscore code variable along with the order underscore JSON variable we just made. Once we have added these initial parameters, we can now run this code and view the return values. Initially, our status response code 200 indicates that the request was successful. In this case, the values returned are our unique system generated order ID, order status, and encrypt message. The order status pre-submitted indicates that a simulated order type has been accepted by the IBKR system and this order has yet to be elected. As with our previously placed market order, in this case, we will need to define and change some additional parameters in the body. Here, we can change the order type from market to limit, as this will now be a limit order. Since we're placing a limit order, we must also define a limit price by adding the price parameter. As mentioned previously, a full list of order parameters are available in our endpoints documentation page. If we run this code, we will see a successful order placement followed by our order ID and order status. Now let's place a stop order. A stop order becomes a market order to buy or sell securities or commodities once the specified stop price is attained or penetrated. A stop order is not guaranteed a specific execution price. To create a stop order, we will change the order type from limit to stop. As with our limit order, we need to define our stop price. We will still use our price field to designate our stop price. It is important to note that instead of the price field, stop limit and trail orders will use the aux price field to designate a stop price. In this case, if we run the code, we will receive a notable response. We can see a reply ID message 
along with a message clearly explaining that we are trying to submit a stop order and to be aware of the various stop order precautions. It asks us whether we want to submit the order. This is a warning that requires we submit a confirmation message, similar to how they appear in Trader Workstation. To approve this order and acknowledge the precaution, we can use the iServer forward slash reply forward slash reply ID endpoint. Moving into a new file, order reply.py, I can build our initial framework. After that, I will use an order reply method structured like usual with a base URL and endpoint. I will set the endpoint variable to iServer forward slash reply forward slash. I can create a reply ID variable and set it equal to our ID field from the prior return. I could set the variable reply URL equal to all of these values joined together. Then I can create a JSON underscore body variable, which simply includes confirmed set equal to true inside an array. Now I will just build our typical post request to the reply URL variable, passing our verify equals false and JSON body variables. And to help read this, I can set my JSON.dumps method once again. Printing out these values, I could see a 200 OK status and our new status message. In some cases, you might receive another ID and message value back. This is typical if more precautions are set on your particular order. Simply feed these ID values back to our reply program and you should be able to approve these orders. Thank you for watching this lesson on placing orders and order confirmation in the Client Portal API. If you found this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.